Hi, this is Jacob from Survival Geek. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am going to go over repairing, repairing clothing. Um, I believe it is in everyone's best interest to know how to sew, know how to repair things in the field or uh, when camping or survival situations, whichever, whatever you come across. As for me, I always carry a repair kit with me, um, something as small as this. I can keep uh, multiple different types of threads and needles and different types of repair options inside. Um, it's really all you need. You can go for a larger kit with you if you're going for a bigger event. Um, they sell various pre-made pre kits at uh, Walmart or other types of stores, Hobby Lobby, uh, Michaels, Joann's, lots of different fabric stores, sewing stores. But um, something as simple as this works just great. But um, you constantly see people talk and wear about different types of needles they pack in their kits. This is a particular one. This is a, what they call a sail needle. Um, sail needles are built for, uh, so you have sailboats and you have the big giant um, sails and, and in case they need to sew two together or they have a rip or a tear and fix things. Well, that's great, but what's very important is the gauge of the needle. The gauge of the needle is how big around it is. Is it small or is it real big? The gauge on a sail needle is pretty big when it comes towards sewing like clothing, for instance. Um, I don't want to create bigger holes that are going to open up later. I want to have a smaller type of needle. So with that in mind, <clears throat> let's look at a few other options we have here. And uh, I'm going to go over the basics of hand sewing and how to sew things by hand. I'm not talking about machine sewing. Um, we're talking about basic things you can do with your hands to uh, sew, sew uh, mend uh, cuts like in a shirt or something like that or, or a pair of pants or a backpack or other types of things. Uh, what types of threads to use, what types of needles to use, what to look for, what, what to test, and what sizes of things to see. Common brand names you'll see out there with needles are Singer. Um, Singer is a decent brand name. Um, as long as it works for you and does great, that's that's the important part. So, um, the other thing we want to look at is um, the eye the eye of the needle. So, with the pointy end, of course, we got the opposite end, which is not pointy. Um, I guess it can be in some cases, um, but we call this the eye. The eye is where we have the thread go through. And if I'm sewing with something in the field like a paracord, for instance, and I open up a piece of Paracord 550 and there's at least seven strands of smaller line on the inside. If I were to sew with one of those strands, or you have to open up one of those strands, get a smaller strand, I would want a larger eye in comparison to some of the needles per se. This is a Singer kit. And the eye of some of these needles per se in the kit are a lot smaller, very, very small. And they accommodate threads such as this to where the thread is very, very small. Okay, and we have ways of getting the thread into the eye versus licking it, trying to stick it in the hole, which most people do. Um, and we're, we'll get to that momentarily. So, um, you can find these. These are also Singer. Uh, what it says, Singer 12, it says large eye needles. Okay, large eye needles. In the back of it says sizes 18 to 22, collectible. Decorative necket holder, ooh. Extra long eye, sharp point, thick shaft, keep away from children. For stitching on heavy duty canvas and woven fabrics. This is more of a type of needle that you would want to pack in a kit and take with you outdoors somewhere. So, <clears throat> let's check out this kit. Trusty pair of scissors. Um, you could do everything with a knife if you had to, per se, but uh, um, I always think it's nice to have a good pair of scissors with you. Personally, me, I carry a Leatherman. And I use a, I have a Leatherman serge, and I use the scissors on there. You could use scissors from a uh, Swiss Army knife, um, any other type of multi-tool, I guess a Gerber, whatever you prefer. These are Kleins. Um, these are some of the best crafting scissors I've come across. You can find these on the electrician's tool aisle at Home Depot, as well as uh, various other stores. It's spelled K-L-E-I-N, K-L-E-I-N. Line tools. Uh, it's a German company. Um, I, I, these are built for cutting through metal wire and such, so they work great on fabric and everything else crafting-wise. So, great 
open this up. Set this aside. <clears throat> this will open up a little bit more. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we're talking about here. The eyes on these needles, if I get closer here, you can see how big the eyes are. That would definitely work with something like paracord. Plus the gauge of the needle, how thick it is, you can see to gauge the needle compared to this first one in line, this is a sail needle. Most sail needles that we see, that uh, you see other survivalist channels will be out there. People talk about how they packed this massive style needle and it's huge, it's giant, or, or I'm the Marine, I was in the military, whichever. You know, and they, they pack this massive needle in there, but when they go to sew something that's really delicate, like, uh, <clears throat> like the, their tent core, they're trying to sew their tent back together and they're jabbing these massive holes in their tent and they're making more damage than actually need to be there in the first place. Um, you don't want something with that type of gauge. You want something more along, along the lines of this, possibly this, okay? Even these would be too big in some cases. These would be about just right. Even smaller would work. So really we're, our needle has two purposes. We're accommodating the type of thread we're using in the eye, but we're also, um, depending on what it's going through. Now this is built for heavier types of fabric, um, which is far beyond what we're sewing. So that being said, <clears throat> I'm going, okay, so putting thread through the eye. <clears throat> we have a few different options with us. This is the easy option. I'll get to this one momentarily. This is what you normally see. This is a needle threader. So what I do is I take this, there's a little bitty wire on the very end, okay? It's the shape of a diamond. I take it and I stick it through one of my needles. So I'm gonna pull out one here from the center. Oh, well, actually that's too big. I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna do three in. This one's a little bit smaller gauge I'm gonna go for. really in there. Okay, so something along the sides of this. Lengthwise, we're looking at, this is a, a Westcott ruler, 18 inches. Lengthwise, we're looking at um, one in seven eighths inches is how long that this particular needle is. Okay, this will work just fine for what we're gonna be using. I'll set that aside. <clears throat> to thread my line through, I would take, I could either lick the line and stick it through the hole and with the hole this size, that should be fairly easy. Or I can use a needle threader. This particular one goes through the hole. And I know what I have it on there because I can sit there and hold it. Now this hole is much bigger. Now I can take my thread that I have here Why I'm choosing blue, we'll get to that momentarily. I'm sure you can see the shirt to my right, your left. Yeah. <clears throat> I could take my thread and I stick it through the hole. Take a look at it anyways. Take a few inches through. Now I'm gonna grab the needle, I'm gonna pull the threader, and it's gonna pull that right back through the hole again. There we go. Now it's threaded for me. I didn't have to stick it through. I just used a threader. Um, now this becomes more difficult. This is okay if the line's really small. I can use one of these. Um, however, if the line is thicker, <clears throat> what I'm going to end up using, take that back off. I'm gonna use something like this. This is by a company called Boy, B-O-Y-E. These are commonly found on the, uh, by the, uh, the knitting and crocheting needles. They, they're not needles, they're more of hooks. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> um, knitting, you'll have two, two particular needles. Crocheting, you have a, a hook. Okay, and you're using the hook the entire time. I used to crochet when I was 16, 17. Believe me, you're bored. Um, you're sitting around in a job, you're bored, you're whatever you're doing, and 
uh, crocheting is one of those things you can just keep your mind going. Always keep your mind going. You don't want the uh, the enemy of any type of situation is is always boredom. Um, even in survival situation is boredom. You want to always keep your mind busy. Crocheting is one of those things you can easily keep your mind busy. I believe in myself. But we'll get that, that another time. Um, <clears throat> so this is an eagle threader. This is a much bigger one. This is more along the class of something you'd thread paracords or a needle with. So it's a bit bigger. It's got two different size hooks. We're going to go with the small hook rather than the big hook. Okay. Now, if I was using a sailing needle, for instance, um, then in that case, I'd probably use the bigger hook. It's uh, slightly flexible, but it's definitely a uh, lot stronger than, per se, this needle threader. If you use too thick of a line on this one, this piece of metal here that's on the inside, it's barely in there, will actually pull out. See, I just broke it. It's gone now. This is trash. That's what happens. This rips off and this is toast. So really, you're down to something like this. And if you're looking to skim it down and make it even smaller, I guess you could, you could grind this off if you wanted to or grind it down. You could grind this off and just leave this hook on there if you wanted to per se make it fit eat more easily inside of one of these or uh, wherever you're putting it. But this is a much nicer one. So for bigger needles, I'm going to stick right on through. I can grab my line. Here's my thread. I can grab my thread, grab onto the edge there, and pull it right back through again. Okay, now I'm threaded. So, <clears throat> let's get, get to what we're working with. A uh, few other things. Um, this is more when I, we get into the sewing bit here. Put this aside. Put this aside. Put this aside. We have what we call bobbins. This is a plastic bobbin. Um, I'm sorry, not a bobbin. Let me make up here. <laughs> um, bobbin is uh, something completely different. This is a symbol, okay? Symbol, this is a plastic symbol that comes in metal. Um, what they're for is, uh, this is a small one that comes in various different sizes, as you can see here. A symbol, uh, when you're feeding the sharp, the, the sharp end of the needle, the business end, through your actual object you're going to sew with, and it's a thicker piece, well, if I'm gonna push with my finger supporting on the opposite edge, I'll go right through my finger. But with this, I can hit this every time. It's not going to go into my finger, hopefully. Especially the metal ones. Maybe not so much with plastic. It, it does seem like it's a nice hard plastic, though. So, But uh, it, in a pinch, you can use a quarter or a coin or um, various other different items you can use. Uh, you could take a... Uh, I know in my fire kits, I carry a smaller piece of a bastard mill file uh, as a scraper in there to scrape thorough rods. I could use that and poke into that instead of this, or instead of the metal piece. Um, <clears throat> most of your kits all come with some type of a ruler. It's always nice. Uh, this one's a paper one. The ones I, well, the ones I, like the one I carry with me is uh, more of like a plastic coated one. But uh, you'll want to have something in there to where, um, especially if you're making something or developing something outside uh, in certain situations, you can measure certain things and see how long around your arm is to see a sleeve that you're making out of leather that you've made as an animal or, or and those are extreme cases, but uh, uh, if your pants were too long and you're trying to hem them up. Um, <clears throat> so you have certain types of tape measures. <clears throat> We have safety pins and we have regular pins, pins and needles, right? So this this is obviously our needle. Pins, you see them in brand new, uh, when you buy a brand new uh, uh, shirt that you're going to put a tie on for a business, for a suit, they always have a multitude of pins inside of them holding them together. And you've, uh, you may have gotten poked before, taking them apart. Oh, here's one. They'll look like this. Sharp on one side, blunt on the other, or you can buy them like this. These have a 
uh, a plastic piece on the other end, and there are multiple different colors. What these are for <clears throat> is they hold things together. So, that being said, put a few of these on the side over here so I can show you what I'm talking about. Um, and their purpose, you can do the same thing with safety pins if you had to. But uh, these work very well for um, for what they're designed for. Let's see. Oh, I'm so tempted to the donkey wrap. normally sell pin cushions you buy that look like a tomato and they hold all your pins. They have another one that looks like a strawberry. The strawberry is filled up with a particular type of sand. That way uh, I've heard all my life that you can shove the needle in a few times. It's supposed to sharpen the needles. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure about sharpening the needles, but uh, um, maybe it removes the, the burrs off the end of the tip or something in that case. But um, but those are the two common things you see a lot for uh, what they call pin cushions for holding pins. Now this works just fine. Um, safety pins are great to have in these types of situations, especially uh, you can use one or two safety pins to hold on a patch if you're putting a patch on a backpack or, or putting uh, holding certain things together. But I'll show you what that's for momentarily. I also want to put on a, maybe a button or two. Um, in a little bit here, so we'll put these aside as well. Okay, we are done with this now. This just came from a generic sewing kit. So, <clears throat> let's get practical here for a moment. We'll put this aside for a magnet. Not that we need it. <clears throat> so we have a shirt. We're outside. Um, this is a thermal, pretty decent thermal, okay. Um, you can feel it, it's kind of thick here in the back, so I know this is the back of the shirt, this is the nut front, this is the front of the shirt, okay. Decent thermal, it's like a bleach stain. But I've noticed that on the side here, is this the right side, or is it the other side? It looks like the other side. On the side here, oh, look at that, there is a tear, okay. We need to, we need to fix that. So how do we fix that? Um, well, <clears throat> luckily I know how. I will show you. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to turn the shirt inside out. The shirt was originally sewn inside out and then turned right side in, or however you want to say it, to where it, it hid all, this, uh, all the stitching marks. All the stitching marks are on the inside. So we're going to, just like it was sewn originally from the inside, we're also going to repair it from the inside. So that way when we turn it back, back inside out, all the stitching marks are hidden there on the inside. So I'm not going to turn completely. I'm going to get it enough to where I have enough to work with. Now from here, I can grab it end to end. And if it's too jagged to work with, what I can do is once I line everything up just how I want it to be, I can take my scissors and trim it up a little bit on the edge here. That way, if it's too jagged, I can make it straight again. And then I just don't want to take off too much, okay? <clears throat> but, so my needles, what are they for? The needles, once I line up these pieces, eyeball them, they're lined up, I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go back a uh, quarter of an inch, half an inch, and stick my needle in. Stick it in uh, about halfway, come back up the opposite side, push my needle back through again, and it's going to hold that together so it's not going to fall apart on me. It's going to hold it in place, and that's what I want. So I'm going to do it again. Just come right in front of where that other needle in, the other sharp end is, the business end of my first needle. I'm going to push in. I'm going to pull back up. Push on in. 
And I'm going to pull this straight right here. Okay, so it's not crooked and jagged. I'm going to stick back in again. Push back on through. Do the same thing up here. Now I'm going to pull this, grab it here, and pull it so now it's lined up straight. Careful of the business ends of all the other needles, they can still poke you. Okay, push it on through. Now I've pushed it through once, I can double it if I wanted to. See, I've put it through double now. I can do that if I want to. But now I'm going to row the needles, and they've now made this whole section up here straight again. Now from here, I can trim this up a little bit. Again, I don't want to do it too much, but I can trim off a little bit. That way it's all no longer jagged anymore. Okay. Now on to the sewing part. Sewing, <clears throat> I typically start with a, a, a piece of thread, maybe uh, two feet long. Maybe it can be a foot. I don't want to be too short. I'd rather it be too long than be too short. Because what's going to happen is two feet is going to make it a foot long for sewing. So this is a little bit longer than two feet. This is also a lighter, it's not as strong. This is, prob this is not an all-purpose thread. This is... Uh, a lot weaker type of thread. So what we're gonna end up doing, take my scissors over here, or knife or multi-tool, I'm gonna to cut my thread. So maybe this is two foot, two and a half foot, approaching three foot. Again, I didn't measure it. I don't really care. It's long enough. Uh, you'll see in a second here what I'm talking about. I need to thread, my, thread on through, so I'll uh, take the easy route again. I'm taking the easy route because you guys can buy this and do it yourselves. And, uh, and, and until you get good thread in the hook without it, then uh, it, it, believe me, it, it, whatever works easiest for you to get the job done. There's no, oh, well, I'm not doing it the manly way. Who cares? You're trying to get the job done. So I threaded my needle. Now here, here's the trick all the way down and we want this end of the thread to match up with the other end of the thread like so that's how much we actually have to work with for sewing <clears throat> put this bin somewhere else safely I'm going to stick it in here the other end I'm going to make a loop and that, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if the loop is this side or this side or it does not matter. I'm gonna make a loop. I'm gonna tuck that thread through the loop once. I can do it just once, but me, I can that I like a little bit bigger knot to work with, so I'm gonna do it either twice or three times. I think me, I'm just gonna do it twice. Okay, so twice through. I'm gonna pull on that till the loop gets super small. And I got a little knot there. Okay. Now I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm going to leave an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch of that thread hanging out. A little tag, like so. Barely see it. Now I'm going to hold on to that little knot. I'm going to pull back down. There. Now this thing is ready for sewing. I'm going to come back to here again. I'm going to go right above where the, the cut mark is, so I can see the whole slash mark is here. But right above here, I still have some good, good stuff to work with where there's no cut marks. I'm going to stick on through just to the... I barely have a little bit of fabric on my needle, okay? And I'm going to pull on through until my tag end is barely there. Boom. Okay, 
I'm going to pull on through one more time. Now, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to thread it through that loop that I just made. So I just made a loop. I pushed through once, fed through, pushed through a second time. As I'm pulling the thread back through, I have a loop. And now I'm going to pass my needle through the loop. I just made a small knot. Okay? Now it's actually there. It's, it's held on. It's not coming out. Unless I pull too hard, then it'll come back out. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to feed right through that loop again. I'm going to do it a third time. You do it three times, you do it four times. Whatever you feel is a strong enough loop for you to work with. Pull that loop back up again. Try to keep that loop. There we go. Try to keep that loop straight as a loop so it's not tangled up too knotty. Pull it back down. There we go. Now I'm ready to start sewing. Well, I've been sewing. Just tying a few knots. Now I can do this one of two ways. I can <clears throat> pass my needle through and basically coil it. So I can pass my needle through, come back around, pass it back through, come back around, pass it back through, come back around, pass it back through. Each time it's causing it to coil around my particular cut. That's one way. Second way, uh, it's, which is typically what you see, <clears throat> is I, I'll come through it, pull all the way through, turn the needle the opposite direction, come back towards me, pull it through, needle goes the opposite direction, push it through again, goes back through, and that's actual stitching, back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, till I get to the other side. Um, <clears throat> if I decide to coil it, what would end up happening is Every time I push it through and come back around, I would get that loop that, like we had earlier, pass the needle through the loop. So here, I would pass on through, grab my needle through that loop, and make a knot. And I do that knot every single time as I'm going through. Sometimes, at the bottom here, one side doesn't get pulled too much, and it creates a, a bit of a loop that you can pull on and reseat again, however you see fit. But to me, because it can create those types of loops to where um, this can come undone and cause the threading to come undone on the inside, I tend to not want to do those. I like to do just regular pass straight through, then come back my direction. Straight down through, opposite direction, down through, opposite direction, back and forth. When you get to the opposite side and you end up finishing, you're going to have a little bit left over. You'll cut your thread off the needle, cut. And then you're going to be left with two tag ends. You're going to tie those tag ends together and make a few granny knots or a few square knots, whichever. When you're all done, you'll cut the excess to where you'll have a, like an eighth of an inch left and you're done. Unless you want to do a separate row. So you can have one row of stitching going straight across. Then when you get to the other side, if you have enough thread left, you can make another row going back to this way again. Or a third row. Or a fourth row. So where you start having double stitching or quad stitching straight across. Each row you do is going to make it stronger and stronger. But. <clears throat> so we'll go on through. Try to keep. Try to keep your stitches pretty close together. Don't try to go too far apart. And keep, keep an eye on things as you're going. Make sure that also as you're going in, that you're, so I have my cut mark, and I want my thread to go at least like an eighth of, eighth of an inch uh, below the cut mark. I don't want to be uh, just sticking it through these top layers up here uh, above the cut mark because when I turn the shirt back around and pull it, it'll pull all those threads back out because they're not actually going through fabric. So I'm going to push on through. 
back the other direction, push on through. And so in this case, I'm not going to need a thimble. If I was sewing blue jean, or if I was sewing a canvas, or uh, a backpack, or uh, uh, it could be a nice sheath, or uh, leather, or uh, other types of things that's thicker, as I'm trying to push it through, it's not going to go through that easily. That's when a pair of pliers or a multi-tool really comes in handy. You can grab the heel and push on through, or use some type of a thimble or an anvil on the opposite side, like a piece of a bastard nil file or a coin to push into. <coughs> In this case, we're getting tangly. Okay. Always go slow. Never go fast or you risk the risk of doing what I just did and everything got super tangly really, really quickly. <laughs> In this case, you're grabbing it, pulling on the knot, getting it just right again. There we go. They're fixed. <coughs> and for those of you that want to view it and tell me that uh, that uh, you know sewings for your wives, just remember uh, remember some of the original seamstresses. So um, men and women have sewn for generations. It is a craft. It is something worthwhile to learn. I've always found it helpful through my life to have always been able to repair things and not have to rely on others to fix my problems. Pull on through again, locating my stitches right next to each other. I'm not spacing them out that much. Depending on what you're sewing, some things you're sewing you can space out your stitching on. It all comes with practice. You want to keep them together though, it keeps a much stronger, it keeps it stronger as it goes. Now, as I'm passing this first needle, I'm going to pull this needle out, and now I'm going to sew it to the next needle. And as I pass that needle, I'm going to pull that needle out, and pull that needle out, and pull that needle out, until I no longer need the needles there. The needles are just holding it together for me. You don't have to have the needles, but it does make things a lot easier. As for me, I'm not going to speed up the cam, I'm not going to make it go by super fast. You guys can skip to the end if you want to, or you can sew along with me, however you want to do it. Um, my particular YouTube account, I can make longer videos, and, and uh, YouTube accepts, accepts them just fine. So, I'm not limited to 10 or 15 minute videos, like a lot of the other characters I see out there. Which is fine. I mean, if that's what you want to do with short videos, then so be it. But sometimes I see shorter videos and I skip out on, you know, more important details. Um, when you're first starting to sew, it's good to start with like uh, maybe a washcloth and you tear tear into a chunk of the washcloth, like cut into it with a knife, and then sew the washcloth back up. You can do it again. Sew the washcloth back up or a towel. Sew it back up, sew it back up, sew it back up. Test test where you have your rose of thread. They sell um, pencils. Uh, they're kind of like a crayon type pencil just for marking on fabric in the fabric aisle of like Walmart or any of the fabric stores. And you can take your, your tear mark and you can go below it like an eighth of an inch with a ruler per se. And you can mark along there with the, with the, with the uh, pencil and then just sew on that line so you keep your stitches all straight, okay? Or, for instance, this is a uh, this is thermal, so it has its own lines going through it, front and back. I can kind of see them. 
uh, kind of like graphing paper, so it makes it easier to keep my stitches all in the same place. I don't want to stitch here, and then a stitch here, and then a stitch here, then one here, then one here, and eventually my stitch path starts. It looks like I'm drunk as I'm sewing. <laughs> so if that's the case, and you get to that, um, and you have to take your stitches back out, I'm going to put this down for a second and switch over here. You get what's known as a seam ripper. A seam ripper looks just like this. This is a small one. I'll put the two pieces together. So I have two pieces. Put them together. It looks like that. One end has a, a, a blunt end. The other, and and uh, the other end is sharp and pointy. The center is like a razor blade. The sharp and pointy end, I'm going to take my, my stitching. I'm going to take one of the loops that I see in my stitching. I'm going to pick it up and push. And it's going to, that center part, the center is going to actually cut it for me. I'm going to cut, 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 cut to each one of the stitches that I've made. And it lets me take my stitching back out again. So that way I can remake it if I have to uh, for seam rippers. Now, you can do that with a knife, an X-Acto knife, a razor blade, a uh, uh, small pair of scissors, um, depending on skill level. Uh, but with these, I mean, there are people who've been sewing for for decades that still use seam rippers. So, you know, don't feel bad you're using a seam ripper. So, so be it. They make really nice ones. I bought this one at Walmart, uh, and, and I, I was lucky enough to find that it does come apart, and it was the correct size I needed to store inside of a mini Altoids tank. So back to sewing. And yes, from doing this, you will poke your finger from time to time. Um, Band-Aid Sport Strip, they're uh, great, to, some of my favorite Band-Aids, they work well because you can wash your hands with them or get your hands wet and the adhesive and the Band-Aid doesn't come back off. Um, as long as it goes on dry in the first place, they stay on the longest. Uh, we're really bleeding than a Band-Aid uh, with a finger cut. It's like a small condom, but they're built for fingers. Uh, they go roll right down your finger and um, keep all your insides inside of you. Still able to get things wet. Great for bathing and then taking the finger cut back off because it uh, puts heel and you need to have oxygen there. So I'm going to take out this needle. And like I said, do practice, 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 practice 10 times on 10 different cuts before you take a kid out in the field and sew something that you really, really matters to you. Um, you'll find that you can sew and mend and uh, repair or strengthen a lot of different items um, just with this ability without having to glue it or, or, uh, or you know, have someone else do it for you, or a lot of times there's sewing and alterations at a lot of dry cleaners and places you take it to, but that, you know, you have to pay someone else to do it for you. You have to um, trust them with your stuff that it doesn't get ruined or, or be without it for a certain time period. So, um, you know, the faster you get at this, the, you know, it's just the more things you sew it, more skill and more skill. And push that back through. But like I said, this gauge of needle is about right, or something smaller than this works well for this type. I as I'm sticking it through, I'm, it's creating a bigger hole inside the fabric, but it's allowing this to go through. But since the line's so small, the line even doubled up like this is smaller than the needle itself. So the needle is creating an unnecessary size of hole through the object. Now, if it's a sail, like for a sail type needle, that's fine because it's a, it's a massive 
massive chunk of cloth or canvas or whatever the sail is made out of. It's very thick. So it works very well for that. And you can create a bigger hole and not have to worry about things. But smaller things, more petite type stuff, um, it creates a problem. It is problematic. You don't want to do that. Um, a great example is um, <clears throat> a great skill to have is um, learning how to suture. Okay? Um, suture suturing we have several different types of suture needles different gauges uh, that being you may be you may have a slash on your hand in your wrist here and you're you're sewing up your your wrist or something on your leg or arm or body somewhere and you're sewing up that's one type of thickness of skin takes a certain type of gauge of needle but if you have a cut on the inside of your lip that the skin on the inside of your lip is so thin that if I use a thicker needle, it's going to create even bigger holes. So in that case, I'm looking for a very, very thin needle. The gauge of the needle is everything when I'm sewing, depending on what I'm sewing. So like I said, practice with thin things. Use try try a, a sheet of polyester or like a, a small tarp or a small rain suit like Frog Togs from Walmart or... or uh, uh, a, a windbreaker is a great, great thing. A very small, thin fabric. Try thicker needles on it. Watch the bigger holes you create. Great, great uh, learning experience there. Before you have to sew something up like a tent or, uh, or a three or $400 jacket that you're working on. Closer I put my stitches together means I'm running out of thread. So what happens when I run out of thread? <coughs> um, at that point, if I get down to about here, <coughs> I'm going to cut my line, and I'm going to tie. Um, I'm going to take this line, um, and I'm going to take a, another piece of uh, string. I'm going to uh, feed it back through the needle, so I have another piece. I'm now going to take my two ends. I'm in on one side here, and I'm at, at my brand, the back end of my new thread on my new needle. I'm going to tie both of those together, uh, like a granny knot or, or a square knot, um, so it's tight. And then I'm going to continue sewing. And when it gets to that point, it's going to pull on through, um, and um, I, and I'll go from there. But I, what I want to do is I want to, I don't want to tie that knot until I get down to like, you know, I, I barely have some on there left over. Then I can tie that knot and extend that thread. I don't want to extend it to here because I'm still going to have to push this and that knot through whatever I'm sewing. And I may have to, in order to do that, I may have to push on through and then wiggle my needle some to kind of create a bigger hole there push that knot through, and I don't want to have to work with that. But again, I'm teaching the, the, the basics of sewing here, um, and there are so many other different things to learn. There are, there's, there are, if you took classes on sewing and how to do different things, or sewing machines, it's just so many different things and what not to learn and I'm not teaching those types of things I'm doing the, the sheer basics uh, in Boy Scouts as a kid I used to see fathers try to attempt at sewing and it would look so raggedy and bad I, I felt sorry for them that they you know they, they were self-taught and they uh, and they just you know hoped no one would ever say anything you know but it looked so hideous uh, what, what was going on so some cases you can use uh, uh, fabric glue and you can put like a patch uh, on something with the fabric glue. Then you can go back around the edges after the fabric glue is dried and sew in the edges to hide your stitches into the edges of the patch. Um, keep, your, keep your stitches very close together. Use the same color type of thread so you're hiding the color type of thread. <coughs> and uh, that way, uh, 
you don't ever have to worry about the patch coming off and everything still looks professional. Just a side tip there. Getting close towards the end here. Coming up to another needle. Pull him out. I think that's the last needle. So that's fine because the rest of it here is pretty sewn up. Now I'm just going to do one pass through today. So one row of stitches, is what I'm trying to say. I should do two. If I was actually, you know, going to be wearing this a while or doing that type of thing and I may sew this later on due to three stitches going across with a much stronger type of thread. Um, I always carry blue jean thread with me. Blue jean thread is pretty strong. Um, my favorite type of thread to sew with uh, in, in uh, situations where I'm outside or uh, a heavy canvas or uh, backpacks or whatnot, believe it or not, is uh, waxed unscented dental floss. It's extremely strong thread. It doesn't break or rip. Um, I have an example of it here in a second I'll show you um, of a knife case I used with it and uh, worked rather well for that. Be gentle when you're working with knots. If you've uh, knotted the other side. Sometimes it's a matter of pulling them apart. Other times it's a matter of pulling one side of the thread rather than the whole thing at once sometimes it can be as simple as pulling one side of the thread or the other side of the thread to get your knot untangled 